Now in Talking Solutions, Pancreatic Cancer Awareness. We've got the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, also known as PanCan, in studio with us. Chelsea Finlayson, Rebecca Shanahan, and also got Renee Egan. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. I know that Beasley, and specifically our friends Mike and Carla from 96.3 KKLZ, always involved with Purple Stride, the big walk event that happens, I'm thinking, last weekend of March. You guys are already getting set up for that. We had Pancreatic Cancer. Cancer Awareness Day just a few days ago? On the 16th, it was World Pancreatic Cancer Day, where close to 60 organizations in 27 countries came together to raise awareness for pancreatic cancer. Is this a whole awareness month? It's a whole awareness month. Our month is purple. Purple Stride is the name of the walk. It all makes sense. Such a devastating cancer. The survival rate, 9%? Yes. The last time we talked about it, we had a five-year pancreatic cancer survivor in our studio. Mm -hmm. And that's rare because the five-year survival rate is just 9%. So that's obviously not very high. I'm with Anderson Dairy, and we are a co-presenting sponsor for Purple Stride again in 2018. The reason we're involved is because our president, Harold Bellinger, who's also my grandfather, passed away from pancreatic cancer in 2016, and he was diagnosed and six months later was gone. It's hard to detect early, so it's hard to diagnose, and by the time you do, it's tough to hear. I am so sorry, Chelsea, about your loss. And I do remember when we were talking about the 2017 version of Purple Stride Mm -hmm. that Anderson Derry had stepped forward. I remember that. And I do also recall that it was because of something related to pancreatic cancer within the family of Anderson Derry. Correct. It was our president, my grandfather. He was diagnosed in January and he worked up until January, every day of the week. (laughs) He loved it. We miss him. Well, and it goes so fast. Years ago, Mm -hmm. one of the first cases of pancreatic cancer that broke hearts all over the world was Patrick Swayze. Right. That was very high profile. Everybody was so hopeful that he could overcome it. And that's what we're really looking to do, right? Right. Is yes. to get the survival <laughs> rates so that pancreatic cancer as a diagnosis is not automatically mm-hmm. a death sentence. Yes, absolutely. And the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network has a 2020 vision to double the survivor rate. So we're working very aggressively to raise research dollars. What's the saying? They put their money where their mouth is. They, since 2003, have awarded 159 grants to 158 scientists and almost 60 institutions. This is a total of almost $50 million that the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network has aggressively pursued to change these statistics. And that's the kind of funds we raise by doing things like Purple Purple Stride, Stride. which, as we said, we're several months out front of it, but we're going to get organized so you can raise even more money for the 2018 walk. Yeah, and I hear time and time again, people are tired of us always asking for money. But science follows money. And without money, you're not going to make any changes in this disease. We've seen breast cancer go where it's gone because people have invested time and science. And Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is, as I said before, aggressively pursuing the same type of pathway because without money and without people enrolling in clinical trials, there won't be any changes to this disease. Rebecca, all of the information talking about pancreatic cancer, what I'm seeing is not just the survival rate, 9% now. We want to see that increase, but also contained in the information, I saw suggestions that among the things encouraged for someone who has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer is to get involved in these clinical research trials. Yeah, and I think it's important to debunk the myths of clinical trials because once they're diagnosed, of course, you're going to do what your oncologist asks you to do. But in many instances, your oncologist isn't even familiar with the types of treatments that are currently available. And no one suggests that you don't do the FDA-approved recommended chemotherapy. You would still get that form of treatment, but in conjunction with a clinical trial to further study and find out what works, make advancements in early detection tools, and learn about the tumor specifically. There's so many breakthroughs breakthroughs nowadays in immunotherapy. The Pancreatic Cancer Action Network has a program called Know Your Tumor. So if a patient qualifies, you can have your tumor molecularly profiled to get more targeted treatments. They also have an up-and-coming Precision Promise program where you get another program for more specific treatment targeting that type of tumor. Without funding and without those types of programs and people willingly enrolling in those programs, we won't see that survival rate double by 2020. 
2020 is coming it's up right on us fast, so right. we do need to work really hard for that. I've been engaged in this organization for six years now, and when I started, it was at 5%. Each year, there's been an incremental increase. I think it's the past three or four years that's increased three or 4%. That represents 1,500 patients. It's significant, and we need to just keep seeing those numbers increase. Well, just like when we had one of our five-year pancreatic cancer survivors in studio with us, that's what you want to see more of, more survivors. I want to see more people come through this. Yeah, it's hope. More people need that hope. And I think those survivors provide that hope. You know, Rebecca, you were also mentioning about people who have been diagnosed, encouraging them to go ahead and get involved in these clinical research trials. I've got to believe that if you're diagnosed with something as scary as pancreatic cancer, heck yeah, I'd get in that trial. Give me something cutting edge. Give me something that you think might be able to help in a situation like that. Yeah, and I think that's why it's so important and we're thankful for Beasley Broadcasting and Anderson Dairy, people who have a voice to educate people on the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, on Purple Stride, what our mission is, because if they don't know it's out there, they don't don't know where to go. And with pancreatic cancer, you don't have a lot of time to make decisions. Our organization has a program called Patient Central. And once you're diagnosed, a patient, a caregiver, family member, whomever it is, can call the Patient Central program and they're immediately connected with an associate that can walk them through the steps. They cannot provide medical advice, but they can review their diagnosis and try to give them, you know, an overview of who in the United States can potentially provide other types of treatment and to get those second and third and fourth opinions. That would be so important. There are so many people who just aren't that familiar with pancreatic cancer. All they know is it's really, really scary. Yep. And it's a really bad cancer. Yep. It's actually come up in the rankings. Yeah, it surpassed breast cancer to become the third leading cause of cancer deaths and is expected to become the second by 2020. So it would be lung cancer number one, pancreatic cancer, and then colon and breast. And we hear about breast cancer all the time. Yes. People need to start paying attention. You know how people will skim their news feed and just pass over something because sometimes I think if they acknowledge it, it's bringing it into their life. You know, I don't know anybody, so it doesn't affect me. Well, at one time, the three of us, the four of us who are sitting here didn't know anybody either. So it's critical that people start paying attention because I guarantee you, if you talk to somebody at the post office, they'll say, oh, my neighbor from so-and-so had pancreatic cancer. Those are the types of conversations and dialogue that need to occur on a regular basis, get people talking about this cancer, and hopefully that'll motivate some change. There are a lot more connections out there than you realize. I know Chelsea, it was your grandfather. Renee, it was your grandmother. Pancreatic cancer. What are the risk factors? There may be a genetic connection here. That's with all cancers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, Chelsea, you'll be always watching Renee. You'll be doing the same thing. They also get into your diet. Mm -hmm. People who consume things like red meat might have a higher risk. There are a bunch of things. If you are obese. Diabetic. Yep. That heightens your risk. Mm -hmm. A smoker. Yes. Diabetic. I have a friend who just went through a severe case of pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. They wondered if there was a connection between diabetes and pancreatic cancer. Well, it's your pancreas that doesn't handle insulin, which leads to a diagnosis of being diabetic. Right. And I think it's important to highlight, too, that some of the healthiest people are all of a sudden shook by this disease. I think it was in the news the other day, and the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network hasn't confirmed this, but the news reports did say that that young man who was 18, who was being vetted by the Red Sox, died within a week of his diagnosis diagnosis from pancreatic cancer. So you're talking about somebody who was 18 years old, epitome of health, heading to the major leagues potentially, who passed away within a week. That's what makes this cancer so scary. That's why we've got to do what we can to raise those research dollars so that we can figure out what's going on here. Yep. And change it. Absolutely. better. There are also symptoms that we might all look for. My grandfather, he started with lower back and abdominal pain. He was totally fine one day and then just started having pain and it just progressed from there. We know he was admitted to the hospital, developed jaundice, he lost appetite, all of it, weight loss. And then he did have onset diabetes, which had never even been on his radar before. So all the symptoms in six months. Those are some of the symptoms. A lot of people too are diagnosed with just general gastrointestinal issues. And I've seen it time and time again, you know, oh, it's IBS or take pills for this, some pills for that. My best girlfriend kept complaining of a lump in her throat. 
And they kept sending her home saying it's just acid reflux. So I was honestly expecting a throat cancer diagnosis. And one day she came back and said, no, it was her pancreas and it already spread to her liver and there was nothing they could do. And this throat issue went on for weeks before anybody was able to pinpoint. And she actually went to the emergency room for a cramp in her leg, and it turned out to be a blood clot. And everyone knows cancer throws clots, so they started digging deeper, and that's when they found the tumor on her pancreas. Very, very scary. That's exactly how I'm feeling hearing the stories. Wow, we got to do something about this. But you guys think we can. Oh, yeah. We've seen it. Rebecca and I have been involved for six years, and in that six years, we wouldn't have stayed involved if we hadn't been seeing change and if we didn't believe that what we're doing is making that change. I mean, when my grandma was diagnosed in 2006, it was 3%. There was nothing between here and Utah. The doctors knew nothing about it. We had been in the hospital in Mesquite for a week. We got out. Two days later, she turned jaundice on us, and she'd been complaining the whole year before about acid reflux and things like that. She was diabetic. Never once did they check her pancreas. So I think you have to be your own advocate, too. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here to do is to demand better, to get those statistics, these risk factors out there, so that if you are feeling this over and over and nothing's happening, you are your own advocate. If I would have known then, we would have had her pancreas scanned, but we didn't know. Well, even then, just scanning your pancreas isn't the go-to diagnosis, right? Because it's so embedded in your abdominal cavity that when it actually is picked up on a scan, it's usually metastasized or it's become so large. It's the endoscopy, and, and there's only three doctors here in Las Vegas that actually diagnose pancreatic cancer doing the endoscopic ultrasound because they're the experts in that field. And that needs to change. More people need to be proactive and engaged in the conversation. Proactive, Rebecca, is what I was just thinking, because here we talk about pancreatic cancer. Don't be scared. Be proactive. Bring it up. Just say, I was learning about this the other day. Could you check my pancreas? And your doctor might roll his eyes or blow it off. It's not your pancreas. If you're not getting the answers you're wanting, go to a different doctor until you get peace of mind. That's what we did. And don't put stuff off. If you are feeling symptoms, get it checked out. Like you said, be proactive. It's important. A lot of research money is coming from the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Mm Mm-hmm. I am so proud of this organization. There are days that we're all tired and we're arguing with each other because we're stressed out, but that's a minimal complaint compared to someone who's actually going through it. So we keep moving forward. I can't rave enough about this organization. Every day I'm engaged with them, I'm impressed. They are really becoming the go-to organization for those affected by pancreatic cancer. It tears apart families, and it does it quickly and in the most horrible way. I think that's why some of our volunteers are the most passionate volunteers in the cancer community, because it happens so fast. You see these people go from healthy to waking up jaundice or complaining of back pain, and then a few months later, they're gone, or days later. Thank you for letting us be here today to talk about it. I think this is the third conversation where we've all sat down to talk about pancreatic cancer awareness, treatment, and different options and events like Purple Stride. It's not too early to start planning it with Mike and Carla from 96.3 KKLZ. They'll be out there again this year coming up March 24th, 2018. It'll be our first year at Cornerstone Park. Moving to Henderson. Our website is live at www.purplestride.org slash Las Vegas. So you can go in and register, sign up your team, start fundraising early. They keep increasing our monetary goal every year. So we're going to keep trying our best to make that goal. But we need community engagement and participants. We can make it happen. Such a fun event. Good because it gets the message out and it supports families and survivors and patients. But it's also really fun. It's a fun family event. We loved it last year. We loved being involved. That's why we're back again this year. It's a good time. And they bring the chocolate milk. I know. (laughs) Anderson Dairy is one of the big title sponsors for Purple Stride 2018. And now, Chelsea, we know the reason why. It's near and dear to our hearts that the company, um, we're a family at Anderson Dairy and we lost our patriarch. It's close to us. Optum Care Cancer Care also came on as a co-presenting sponsor for next year. It's pretty exciting that we have Anderson Dairy coming back. We have a cancer care organization stepping up. But we want to see more. Mm -hmm. Now, Chelsea, I'm going to start with you. Mm -hmm. We always ask, what can we do to help you? Show up for Purple Side, register, get involved, make a difference, make a change, demand better for pancreatic cancer survivors and patients and caregivers. I'm seeing this phrase, demand better. It's our November battle cry this year. Better early detection tools, better treatment options, more education, more support for caregivers, more support for survivors, better for pancreatic cancer and the 53,000 people that will be diagnosed this year. 
That's what we need. Uh-huh. I haven't asked you the question, Rebecca. What can we do to help you? I think you're doing it. Get the voice out. Help us to demand better. You guys are great. You have the platform to do that. And that's the type of voice that we need. Renee? I agree with both of them. Getting signed up, coming out to a run and walk, following us on Facebook at PanCan Nevada. List all of our events. If you can't come to Purple Stride, there's always another event you can get involved in. Coming to meetings just to give support or ideas. Get involved. We need more people on our leadership team. Um, Volunteers. (laughs) We're always looking for more volunteers. Before you know it, it's going to be time for Purple Stride 2018, March 24th at Cornerstone Park in Henderson. All the information will be on the Talking Solutions Facebook page, along with links, the podcast of our discussion. This has been very informative. Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Chelsea Findlayson, Rebecca Shanahan, Renee Egan, thank you for joining us today on Talking Solutions. Thank you. Thank you.